Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Jesus Calling Podcast. Before we get started, we'd love to tell you about an exciting deal on Jesus Calling products at a Parable Christian store near you. Right now, you can find the devotional Jesus Calling for Kids, now available in a pale pink cover or an outdoor adventure cover, marked down from $17.99 to only $9.97. Hurry into a Parable Christian store near you or pick up a catalog to get this great deal before July 31st. God has a plan. It's okay to not be okay at times, but just don't get stuck there. It's so easy to get stuck there. And He's constantly working, but trusting and knowing that He's working and that you're not in control. Trust the one that is. Welcome to the Jesus Calling Podcast. Have you ever had a dream that you thought God put in your heart only to realize that dream wasn't a part of what He really had planned for you? Our guests this week saw the dreams they had give way to a bigger calling from God. Singer Jackie Velasquez and worship pastor Andy Harrison. Jackie Velasquez began a very successful career in Christian music at a young age, and along the way made some missteps as she grew into adulthood that she thought would shatter her dreams. Broken and feeling alone, Jackie held on to her faith and leaned into how God was rescripting her story. Fast forward, and Jackie's married to the love of her life and has two beautiful children, when once again, life takes a turn with the news that her oldest child has autism. Through the pain of wondering why, Jackie came to realize that God had called her to fight for her son, and yet another rescripting of her story yielded a new purpose for the singer's life. Hi, I'm Jackie Velasquez. I'm a singer, I'm a songwriter, I'm an author, I'm an actress, depending on who you talk to. I'm married. And we have two sons. Uh, Zealand is 11 and Soren is 10. We get pregnant about two months after we get married with a little boy named Zealand. Zealand is now 12 years old. When Zealand was in second grade, we started noticing he wasn't meeting the milestones of other kids his age. So we decided to get him tested, to get him tested, just to make sure that he was all good. So they said that he was delayed. So I was like, I can deal with that. He's delayed. He's going to catch up, right? He's delayed. He's fine. I guess it was kindergarten year. I learned a phrase I'd never heard before, which was called IEP, Individualized Educational Program. Hmm. Okay. So they rolled out the red carpet. He was going to have help with so much stuff, and he was going to definitely catch up. Second grade year, it rolled around, and they had to give him an official diagnosis. And this word had been, had been bounced around before, but we were sticking with pervasive developmental delay. So they sat us down at this big table in the, in the school, the principal, the vice principal, people from the district, you know, the school district, the who's who was in this room, the pediatrician and the school concurred. And they told us Zealand is autistic. That hit me like a ton of bricks. That was uh, that was pretty traumatic. <sighs> of course, I broke down in tears, and I was like, "How can this be?" Because when I was pregnant with Zealand, he was living in my belly. I knew for a fact. I felt it in my in my gut, in my spirit, that my son was going to have a ministry, that he was going to do something incredible for God because surely he would because I mean daddy and I we've been in ministry since since we were kids I mean I started traveling and singing about Jesus and to Jesus for Jesus from the time I was nine years old I didn't get to go to school I didn't get to go to prom surely my son is going to have a ministry and God and I wasn't just it was not just me thinking that it was God showing me that my son's gonna have a ministry But how can you have a ministry if you can't communicate? So after that meeting, I remember we got home and I was so angry with God. So angry with God. This deck of cards, this is not, this was not the plan. My son is not broken. Why me? Why me? I've dedicated my whole life to you. Why me? It was about six months later. I had to change my posture. 
I stopped asking the question, why me? And I started asking the most important question, which was, why not me? Why not me? Once I started asking that question, he didn't chastise me. He just started talking and said, okay, get up. You've been angry long enough. It's time to get up and it's time to fight. You have to fight for Zealand. And if you know my personality, I don't like confrontation. I don't like to fight. I like to bury my head in the sand. That's so much easier in life. Well, you can't bury your head in the sand when your son is autistic and when you have to fight for things for him because he can't fight for himself. So it was a a very difficult experience. And the reality is we're still walking this road. We're not finished. I mean, Zeeland is 12 years old. He just started middle school. It was a whole new team. I had to go fight for what his goals should be, how much prompting he needs. And it's hard because I have to relive it each time, but I know that it's necessary because I'm not the only one that's gone through it. When you have a child with special needs, at times you feel like an island. You feel so kind of isolated because it's like, how can anybody understand they don't know my world. They don't They don't understand our, my story. They don't understand my son. Because, and with autism, the unique thing about it is every autistic child is so different. There's not one that's alike. So I think that when you have a child with autism, you have to develop a tribe. I think the main goal for people that have friends that have children with different abilities is to be a shoulder, to be a listener, because until you've walked until you've walked down that road or walked in their shoes, you can never truly understand what it feels like or what they're going through. God is faithful and we can trust. And sometimes what he wants for our lives and what he wants for our families and for everything looks different than what we had pictured. So we make plans, we we write these scripts for our lives and have these dreams of what our lives are gonna look like. And then God interrupts those. But his interruptions are very good. It's about listening and waiting for the interpretation for this interruption. That's the hard part. I think it's pretty incredible how often we need to just, we need reminders of God's word and God's promises because we live in a very dark world. So I love when you have devotions like this, where it's like just snippets of what God is trying to show you, what God is intending for your life. The devotion of Jesus calling by Sarah Young. I remember it was a gift from, I want to say maybe my, my grandma, she sent it to me and it was perfect for a time in my life. For me, it's hard as a mother to just really, you know, sit there and just, uh, you know, do like Bible study type devotions. So it's been really good for me because I'm able to have a better understanding of what God is trying to show me through a scripture. There are times when when it's so easy to dive and get, get intimate with the Lord and, and through his word. And then there are days where you just feel like you're just progressing. You're like, what is going on? But we have to continuously dive into what God is trying to show us. He craves intimacy with us. He wants to reveal himself to us in a beautiful, deeper way than ever before. And he does that by way of scripture and prayer. His word is the living word. It will not, it will not go void. But we have to take that step to just take the time to sit down rest in his word, read his word, meditate on his word. And our lives, our lives can be transformed through that. And and I just, I can't encourage you enough to just take time for the word, take time to read, ask him after you're done reading it. What are you trying to show me, Lord, through this? How is this a part of my story? Show me who I am through your word. 
February 17th. I am the risen one who shines upon you always. You worship a living deity, not some idolatrous man-made image. Your relationship with me is meant to be vibrant and challenging. As I invade more and more areas of your life, do not fear change for I'm making you a new creation with old things passing away and new things continually on the horizon. When you cling to old ways and sameness, you resist my work within you. I want you to embrace all that I am doing in your life, finding your security in me alone. It is easy to make an idol of routine, finding security within the boundaries you build around your life. Although each day contains 24 hours, every single one presents a unique set of circumstances. Don't try to force fit today into yesterday's mold. Instead, ask me to open your eyes so you can find all I have prepared for you in this precious day of life. It's difficult in life because when you sin and you make choices that you made out of either selfishness or lack of content or just discontent, it's hard at times because you're walking in disobedience. I have walked that road where it's like, I'm making a choice because God, I don't trust you enough to make the right choice for me. So I'm going to do it myself. And the hardest part is when you walk down that road and you realize that it was a mistake and it was a misstep. You were not walking in the will of God. It feels like you can't forgive yourself because of the shame, because of how stupid you feel. What was I thinking? And the reality is he went to the cross and took our sins with him. He forgives you sooner than you forgive yourself. So why do we continue putting ourselves on the cross? What we do. There are times when I look back at choices I've made, I, I still kind of go, what was I thinking? Instead of going, man, God has so much grace for me. He's forgotten. He forgave. He forgot. Who do I think I am that I can't forgive and forget? So that's a trap that we as human beings can walk in and stay there. It's okay to acknowledge that, yes, I made a poor choice, but don't get stuck there. That is an unhealthy place to be. I have done it. That's why I can say it. We don't, we, we can't put ourselves on the cross. He already went to the cross for us. So I have a book that released October, 2019, and it's called When God Restricts Your Life. It's a collection of stories of my personal life, along with stories taken from the Bible and just different characters within the Bible that God has rescripted their lives. So I feel like uh, my life was rescripted many times, sometimes based on my own choices, sometimes based on what God had in store, plans that I didn't see coming, things I didn't see coming, things I ran towards that were not healthy for me. But I, I guess the reason I wanted to write this book now was because of the fact that I know that I'm not the only one that God has rescripted their story. Our stories are constantly being rescripted, but he is the great author. So the hardest part is walking in obedience with the script that he is in place for you. Sometimes we try to take it into our own hands and try to write our own story. God is going to interrupt our plans. He's going to change our stories. He's going to give us a script for a story in our life that we just didn't see coming, that we don't know how to navigate. I think it's so important for us to embrace the interruption, but listen for his interpretation. Our dreams and God's calling are not always the same thing. So I think it's important to listen for his voice, to listen for his plan and be patient and wait. That doesn't mean to sit and be lazy and wait. It means to lean into him, ask for his interpretation, ask for his plan and not confuse the two, our dreams and God's calling. I've had so many dreams for my sons, but they may not turn out the way that I have dreamt them. So I have to trust that they're gonna walk 
They're going to walk in the light and that God has a specific calling for their lives. It may look different than my dream or what I think for them, but I trust and know that God loves them more than me and He has a calling. And I know that He is going to see that fulfilled in their lives if they walk in obedience and listen for His interpretation. Jackie's new book called When God Rescripts Your Life is available now wherever you buy books. Stay tuned for Andy Harrison's story after a brief message about the great work that happens on behalf of military service members, veterans, and first responders through the Gary Sinise Foundation. The Gary Sinise Foundation works to keep our defenders and their families strong each and every day. Join us as we show the pride and gratitude of our nation to all of its heroes. While we can never do enough for our defenders, veterans, first responders, and the loved ones who sacrificed right alongside them, we can always do a little more. To make a donation, visit GarySiniseFoundation.org. As he was growing up on the Australian island of Tasmania, Andy Harrison remembers he heard about God, he just didn't know Him. But after a trip to summer camp as a teen, and later a worship conference, Andy felt a calling that he'd found his people, and he dreamed of being like the new mentors in his life. Today, Andy has become that leader for so many young people looking for purpose and hope, and he's written a new book and album, both called Jesus Over Everything, that he hopes will remind teens that when they don't know where to turn, Jesus will always be there to guide them and give them purpose. Hey everybody, my name is Andy Harrison and uh, myself and my wife Susanna are the youth pastors of uh, Planet Shakers Youth Ministry and I'm also one of the drummers for Planet Shakers Music. The song involves in everything to do with young people and then everything to do with music and uh, I love the mix of the two because our whole lives get to be about helping young people encounter God and a lot of the time it's through the creative arts and through music. So I grew up in Tasmania. So for those of you not from Australia, Tasmania is uh, the little island down the the south of Australia. It's kind of like our version of Alaska. It's the the coldest part of Australia and it's a little bit more remote. Uh, But I grew up, I had an awesome Christian family. My parents, great people planted in church. And uh, and I grew up going going to church every week. You know, I started getting drum lessons when I was quite young, when I was actually six years old. And so by the time I was maybe 10 or 11, I was actually playing drums in our our little family church. But I would say that even through those years of being a, a, a kid growing up in church, it probably wasn't all that real to me. It was just something we did as a family. I explain it to young people now uh, as that, that I knew a lot of things about God, but I didn't know Him for myself. So when I was uh, 13, I went to a youth camp and uh, I didn't go there to encounter God, if I'm honest. I actually went there because there was a girl that I was interested in and she was going to the camp. But I went uh, just going to hang out with my friends and, and do these things. And, but, you know, I didn't realize that God had something more for me at this camp. And I really encountered Jesus for myself. Um, and it was actually because in worship, I was watching other young people around in worship and I began to realize that I was missing out on something. They all seemed to know something more than I did. And I began to, well, that was enough to really stir my heart, to want to know God in that moment. And through that, to give my life to Jesus, ask Him to forgive my sins and step in a right relationship with God through Him. And that camp completely changed my life. As a 13 year old, I went back home and I really made that a simple decision. God, if if what I just encountered of you is who you are, if you're that good, then I don't want anything else but you. Uh, I just want to know you more in my life. And so through my high school years, I began to really chase after God and, and want to know Him. And because of that, to want to see other young people come to know Him as well. So I had many heroes growing up, uh, particularly um, in regards to my faith. and. Um, Actually, the most significant for me and a big part of my story is that I ended up coming to Planet Shakers conferences. Planet Shakers started as a youth conference and uh, it was run in a, a different city from where I grew up. But I had a youth leader who had come from that city 
he was saying to me one summer, hey, I'm going to go back for this youth conference called Planet Shakers. You should come with me. Some of our other guys should come with us. And uh, I didn't know what it was, but sure, I'm not doing anything in summer. I'll come to this youth conference. And I just remember walking into this, this building with about 3,000 young people in it. They were going absolutely crazy. They were so passionate for God. They were so loud. And they were expressing what, I felt about God on the inside. And I thought to myself, these are my people. And really from that moment, that really impacted me. So I remember seeing Pastor Russell, Pastor Sam, who are now my senior pastors. I remember watching them preach at that Planet Shakers conference, watching the Planet Shakers band play. And I remember thinking to myself, man, I want to be like these people. And uh, fast forward a few years, and I'm now a part of this Planet Shakers ministry, which is now a church with a youth group. And uh, not only that, but I recently preached at Planet Shakers Conference. I got to preach at the very conference that changed my life. And I thought, God, you're so good. You gave me heroes growing up that have now become significant people in my life and have greatly impacted my life. So, yeah, I'm very grateful for that. You know, I I think uh, young believers, young people are so important. Young people are the future. Young people are creative. Young people aren't always as you know, held back by their past. Young people are used to learning and growing. And that's why when we can apply faith to all of that and the things of God, it can become so powerful because they can grow so quickly. I'm really passionate about seeing young people encounter Jesus because that was the season in my life where I came to know Him. And I want to see other young people come to know Him too. So our first album as Planet Boom is called Jesus Over Everything. And uh, it actually goes with a a book that I recently wrote, also called Jesus Over Everything. It was a little bit of an accident almost that we wrote that book. It was just a God idea that dropped into my mind. And uh, and once I said yes to God, then He began to reveal the rest of the plan. And uh, each one of the chapters of the book matches with one of the songs from the album. And it's really the message of how to live out the song, the words of the song. These worship and praise songs, they're not just songs. They're actually about living a lifestyle of praise and worship, living to please Jesus, living to put Him over everything, not just in a worship moment, in a service, but in every moment of our lives. And uh, so I wanted to give young people some practical tools and tips about how do I actually do that when I'm at school? How do I do that when I'm not surrounded by other Christian people? And so I think it's, it's really powerful. It's filled with stories from our youth ministry and, and from my own life. And it goes with this music to really equip young people to know Jesus and then to put Him over everything. He is more important. He is the highest priority. Everything that we need is found in Jesus. And so I think when we take God out of the equation, we begin to look for a replacement. And as a generation, The world is trying to teach a generation with things that are replacements for who God already is. In my book, Jesus Over Everything, and in the song from the album, Jesus Over Everything, we talk about the gods of this generation, about how there are things that the world has raised up as these replacements. And and we try and look to them as if they're going to provide what we need when we already have God who wants to provide legitimately and authentically everything that we really do need. And so our joy is found in Him. When we find Jesus, we find real life. And, uh, you know, we just encourage our young people that as they get to know God for, for themselves and they continue to, you know, there's such joy in praise. Anytime we, we get focused on ourselves, all we notice is, is weakness and we begin to doubt. But when our focus is back on Jesus and who He is, the natural response, natural result is joy. Now, I love the the book, Jesus Calling, and I love that it's really simply all about the emphasis that God is the one who draws us near to Him and we are the ones who need to respond. It's really the same message of putting Jesus over everything as well. We are just responding to Him and who He is. You know, something that I I really loved from that book was how personal Jesus is. This is a personal invitation from Him to us. And uh, Jesus is someone I can relate to, go to, rely on, lean on, and He's got everything I need. 
I want to read uh, a passage from Jesus Calling uh, from uh, the date February 4th. It says, Bring me your weakness and receive my peace. Accept yourself and your circumstances just as they are, remembering that I am sovereign over everything. Do not wear yourself out with analyzing and planning. Instead, let thankfulness and trust be your guides through this day. They will keep you close to me. As you live in the radiance of my presence, my peace shines upon you. You will cease to notice how weak or strong you feel because you'll be focusing on me. And the best way to get through this day is step by step with me. Continue this intimate journey, trusting that the path you are following is headed for heaven. For me, what really resonates through this passage is what I was saying before, how personal Jesus wants to be in your life. The fact that He is our peace and that as we focus on Him, He's the one who personally wants to guide us. He wants to speak to you today and He wants to guide you through whatever you're going through. You're not alone in that. Jesus wants to walk with you. Yeah, I want to take a moment just to encourage any young believer listening right now. You know, God has such a great purpose for your life. Psalm 139 talks about how, uh, you know, before you were even born, God had written out the days of your life and He's got great things for you. And I want to encourage you right now. I think the key, how do I know what those things are? The key is seek Him. Matthew 6.33 talks about seek first the kingdom of God. And I want to encourage you to be a young person who seeks Jesus over everything. Seek Him over the approval of your friends and family. Seek Him over, you know, a good future or workplace or job or promotion or good grades in school. Even more important than those things and your own success is seeking Jesus. In Him, you'll find the purpose for your life and you'll find everything that you need. You can learn more about Planet Shakers' new album and the book, Jesus Over Everything, at planetshakers.com. Next time on the Jesus Calling Podcast, we speak with authors and advocates Jay and Catherine Wolf. After miraculously surviving a near-fatal brainstem stroke at age 26, Catherine Wolf's life changed forever, and so did the way she and her husband Jay viewed God, the world, and themselves in it. But Catherine and Jay learned that suffering is not the end of the story, it's the beginning of a new one. We've created this idol of joy only coming in a pain-free life, and um, I'm here to disrupt that lie, that, that idol, that joy can only be found when life is pain-free and not when, when life is painful, where there is tremendous joy. There is the goodness of God to be found maybe even more profoundly in the midst of our suffering, not in spite of them, but because of them. Want to hear more inspirational stories of people who have been changed by a closer walk with God? Then subscribe today to the Jesus Calling Podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please be sure to leave a review, which helps us reach and inspire others with these stories. Plus, if you like seeing our guests as well as hearing them, you can find video interviews available on our YouTube channel at youtube.com Jesus Calling Book on Facebook and on the Jesus Calling Instagram page.